Competency one is to identify as a professional social worker and conduct oneself accordingly. So to conduct myself as a professional, I became familiar with the dress code and standards of the agency so that I could always present myself in a professional manner. And to get familiar with the procedures that were specific to the agency, I asked my field supervisor everything I needed to be aware of um, ahead of time. I, we also connect our clients with resources, so I used our resource guide that we have at the agency to become familiar with other agencies that we contact frequently to help our clients. Competency number two is to apply social work ethical principles to guide professional practice. So this competency was seen this semester when I wrote my ethical dilemma paper. I used the code of con the code of ethics to guide me in the decision making process to make the best decision possible. I also found Reamer's ethical decision making model to be very helpful in determining if the situation was ethical or unethical. And in situ situations when I can't come to a concise conclusion, I will consult my field supervisor and then if that doesn't work, then I'll um, consult my field instructor. So competency number three is to apply critical thinking to inform and communicate professional judgments. So this competency will be met by researching the various health disparities that are present in the 29203 area code to understand how Healthy Columbia can better assist clients. Um, so my agency, Healthy Columbia, we only work in the 29203 area code. So that's why I chose um, that area code to um, research the various health disparities. Um, I will also analyze the effects that Healthy Columbia has on the community through follow-up phone calls with clients to discuss any improvements or additional help they might need. And competency number four is to engage diversity and difference in practice. So Healthy Columbia spends a lot of time working in the community with clients directly. And so to understand the ways our clients might um, experience oppression, I plan to ride the bus once this semester so that I can understand the challenges and obstacles that they face daily when they attempt to get the resources they need, such as, you know, getting to the DHEC office or getting to the grocery store or getting to the doctor's their doctor's appointment, um, just anything like that. Um, I think it's important to um, understand how hard it is for them to get the resources they need without having that transportation. And when you do put yourself in their shoes, it gives you a different perspective. Um, competency number five is to advance human rights and social and economic justice. So to advance human rights, I attend meetings called SHAPE with my field instructor. Um, SHAPE stands for Syphilis and HIV Awareness Prevention and Elimination. And it's a meeting that discusses resources that are available to people living with HIV and syphilis. And we also discuss ways we can spread awareness. So at those meetings, um, a whole bunch of agencies come together and we kind of just all talk about how we can work together and how um, we can spread awareness of the prevalence of HIV and syphilis so people will get tested and um, things like that. Um, competency number six is to engage in research-informed practice and practice-informed research. So to fulfill this competency, I find one scholarly journal article a month around self-care and its impact, and then I discuss it with my field supervisor um, to discuss ways that it could be useful to our clients. I also conduct weekly follow-up calls, calls to clients to determine the impact of our agency as a whole in ways we can improve. Um, so through those follow-up calls, I, you know, check up on them. I check and see if they were able to get in touch with whatever agency or get whatever resource we set up for them. And, um, you know, if they say they couldn't, figure out why, figure out, um, you know, if maybe 
that wasn't the right agency for them and like what can be for them. Um, so we kind of do that through the follow-up calls. So competency seven is to apply knowledge of human behavior in the social environment. So I frequently use the systems theory when assisting clients to help understand their situation and in what ways they could be assisted without causing harm to any of their other systems in their lives. So when conducting a follow-up call with a client, I often take into consideration the financial and transportation challenges that that client might have. Um, for competency eight, I engage in policy practice to advance social and economic well-being and to deliver social work services. So I do that um, by collaborating with colleagues and discussing effective policy action for changes to SNAP in ways that would better fit the needs of our clients. So although it would be hard to change this policy um, in real time, I think it would be helpful to help me understand the ins and outs of the SNAP program. That way I can better determine um, what clients it would be beneficial for and what clients it wouldn't. Um, and I think it could just give me a better understanding of the pros and cons of the SNAP program as a whole and in which ways it's doing its job and then in which ways um, it needs improvement. And competency nine is to respond to contexts that shape practice. And this competency has been seen at my agency through the emerging trend of community health workers. Um, my field supervisor is very passionate about community health workers and having them in underserved communities. So we also um, hold meetings with all of the interns to discuss um, what's happening at the agency, um, any new things that came up that we might have missed out on, how the health screenings went, and just any ways we can improve as an agency as a whole. And then competency number 10 is to engage, assess, intervene, and evaluate with individuals, families, groups, organizations, and communities. So I prepared for engagement with the clients by creating a handout on self-care and the importance of it. And I plan to assess the effectiveness of the handout by giving it out at the health screenings. And then I plan to follow up with the clients to determine if they felt the handout was helpful and to find ways to improve it. And to move into the intervention phase, I will initiate action through my organization to increase awareness of the importance of self-care. To evaluate the intervention, I will follow up with clients every couple of weeks to receive feedback and determine the usefulness of the self-care self -care handout from the client directly.